All right, good morning everyone, or afternoon, whenever you're watching this, or even evening. So what I'm gonna do is the ASX day trading end of week review update, and we'll just go through how the week went. I do try and get this done in around 10 minutes or so. And so first of all, so just don't mind these dates. I use uh, TradeView and it's based in the US. And even though I enter the 19th, it comes out of the 18th, I, I do need to finesse that a little bit. But <clears throat> first of all, I just wanna talk about from Monday to Friday, and I did trade every day this week as well. So obviously the main focus was, I can see, was FMG. I think I exclusively traded FMG this week. So uh, what happened, uh, so this was on Monday. So as you can see, uh, there was a gap down over the weekend. So Monday morning, we, we saw uh, iron ore down 1.7%. This is on the Dalian exchange as well. And entries here were at, uh, it looks like I went 800. So 425.48. And my maths is pretty poor. I don't know if it's, if it's 800. Might have been, might have been 400 and 400 it looks like. It was because of the sell. So how this played out was, uh, all right. So there was a gap down, bounce through VWAP, uh, 2548. I, I'd rated it at a three and a half entry. The stop loss was uh, 2530, uh, 400 shares here. Price came back down to VWAP and tested the low of 2540. Add it again at 48, uh, price came through. You know, to be honest, uh, let's have a look at the chart so I can, you know, that's probably fair. I mean, VWAP was down in, I might have to zoom in here. Uh, the VWAP was not quite 35. Yeah, it's probably 36 or so. So I see why, I mean, I get in at 48. I've got to, what I've found is I've got to be really almost getting in before VWAP because when a bounce is like that, it's, uh, you know, FMG for the first, you know, hour and a half, if it does do that, will typically move higher. And that's in the current, you know, market conditions that I've noticed. I'm already gone like three minutes nearly on this one here. So, uh, and I was paying attention to this as well and it, it did start, moving along and uh, FMG loves to close gaps pretty quick as well, especially, uh, well, obviously in the current, you know, market that we're in with iron ore still really super high. And this, the market is in favor of, you know, buying up dips on FMG. And, uh, you know, for me, it makes it easy, but I'm still looking to adapt to other situations because obviously if we see it, you know, a catastrophic situation with iron ore or whatever, or with China, then there's gonna be some headwinds. But then, you know, I, I find myself struggling to go short, but it's something I can do. And there were some opportunities that were missed uh, this week on that as well. Then I closed out near the top as well. Sugar, this was actually pretty good. The top was 70. So, and we've seen there has been a ceiling at about 80. 2580 and we saw that although were we traded higher than 20 I think we did we gave 26 a rattle last week did we really on oh, 90 sorry sorry okay okay so not quite 26 so we're sort of looking like now we we closed um, uh, yesterday it actually did push to 25 25 as well so I know it did come come off quite a bit overnight on Thursday and then opening up on Friday, we obviously saw a, uh, a move lower, but the 2480 was well respected. Um, anyway, let's, uh, so I include the entry depth here as well, but this was, this was a pretty good trade. Although, um, see that wasn't too bad, that entry there, but my first entry could have been a little sharper. So I left a little bit on the table, but, um, that that was that was pretty good. Um, I did mention risk management. Probably fair. I mean, 
if I was 400 at 25, 35, then that's, you know, that's fair. But as I miss the entry, I need to reduce that sizing a little bit because the value is eroded a little bit on that. So I need to adjust that. Um, all right, so here was another long on FMG. Again, you know, price 220 odd USD a ton was referred to. <clears throat> was really respecting 25 as well. So we saw another, another little gap down. I led, this was the trade. I left a bunch on the table as well. Now I think I might've gone. Yeah, so I went in at 400, one entry. Um, so there was a break below 25 at open. First entry was 2501. Second was, oh, so I must have got in. No, I did get in at 400 shares each after I said yesterday on the Monday that I wouldn't. But um, entry was, yeah, so here the entry was better. But then, um, so price was chugging along. And then I just felt uh, 2520 was, not 2520, it was ramping up again. And I just was, see, this is a bizarre exit. I mean, because I dealt with this and then I, I think I was just getting out at strength, but I mean, there was plenty left there. I mean, what did it get to 80 or oh, 45? Okay. So that was, I mean, I left, you know, that, that could have been another, you know, $180 trade, but it was only, uh, you know, so I probably left like 90 bucks on the table there. So I, that exit there, I was thinking in the back of my mind, I was like, well, the entry was good. Um, I was trying to see the reasoning. Quickly through 25, 24, 15, 25, 15, I've got to adjust that. Seen some rejections earlier in the morning. Yeah, there was no valid reason, so, um, and I went through the tape here, and then you've got the exit. It was probably here, but it had already sort of broken out, and 25 was a nice base. And then, um, it must have been this. I was just a little intimidated by, you know, here. But a lot of these guys just, they back away, uh, or bots or whatever they are, whoever's in here with the cells, and then, that's all. I just thought there was more of a, a more of a substantial wall than there really was. But I've got to wait for it to be tested and not just bail too early with the exit. So I guess you know with the entries, don't overthink and get in if you know there is there is momentum there and there is a break of VWAP, and then don't be too fast to close before you assess the situation as well, because I left a bunch on the table. I mean, there was like, you know, at least 20 more basis points there at 800 shares is like, you know, it's silly. So it's like $160 really left on the, on the table. Anyway, so that was that. Our 21st was, uh, so gap up in the morning. I think this was another buy trade as well. Uh, first entry was at 38, 25, at 40, didn't get filled, got in at 44. So here I got in uh, at, I don't really know what I've done here. So I still closed at 800. I think it was only 410 shares long is what happened here. So I got in at uh, 38, let's have a look. Yeah, so, okay. So what, ha I actually left this on too long. So as you can see, that exit in the 50s was pretty late in the morning. You know, really like 9.30 or 11.30, in Sydney is where it's at. So I got in here 
because it gapped up and then exited here but then I exited there now um, uh, one of the guys I follow on Twitter I think with it or something I don't know if you're gonna watch this video I've been going 10 minutes of dribbling but if you're still watching you know there was a distinct move lower on the Dalian exchange just on the live data feed that it gives I mean it's a little delayed I've got to remember to um, refresh and everything uh, but you know they were clear this was this is when it was turning lower and uh, you know I even had an opportunity there and I was like oh I'll just hold a bit longer but right here you know the <laughs> straight in itself was again you know in in at 40 let's say out at 70 it's 30 basis points 800 a share so I'm still leaving a lot on the goddamn table but uh, you know it's just a learning thing so again I seem to be getting better at the entries but then exits are still a little you know I'm still a little too uh, to PL focused, but I'll go now to here. So this was the red day uh, on Thursday. So I got in, uh, it was this is a bit of a chop fest actually. This was a little bit of a whirlpool. So I got in long, got out here, so that was 24. 2580 was tested, not even 2580, what am I talking about? Yeah, so uh, that was, was not taken, exited just better than break even, and that was at, um, it was 600 shares actually, at 2547. Uh, then I went short at 400 shares, and I went short at, uh, 25.46 as it went through VWAP. I tried to get in at 50 and I, I then I adjusted and got filled at 46. It got as low as maybe 40. Uh, yeah, it did. It got to 40, then then it, it, it you know, rallied pretty strongly. Got out at uh, 25.50. 25.50 was the exit. So I cut that pretty quick. And then, uh, as the day went on, uh, we saw the gap close, not the gap, we saw VWAP broken through, and the uh, Dalian iron ore index was moving lower as well. Just a bit of a red day as well. Overnight, we saw the US session move a little bit lower as well from actually not rallied so monday was was a red day but then tuesday wednesday was strong so you know you know the market was just a little bit jittery today on thursday and then i got in here at 2523 and 2518 so an average of 2521 and i held overnight and uh we'll go to friday that's not friday that's Friday. So uh, here now, I've just this is sort of an end of week thing as well. Um, I'll probably make another Evernote just to summarize it a little bit better. But end of day. It's just lazy. Um, yeah, so I include the uh, the weekly trades there as well, well, the accumulation from the week's trades. So not like a huge amount, but uh, as you can see, I, I left a little bit on the table. And today, or oh, yesterday, I, uh, yeah, so I was holding and I could see in pre-market 2508 was a recent low that was tested and you know, price bounced up. Might have been on that uh, that that Thursday uh, sell off. I think. Let's go to the twenty second. I think it was. So down here, twenty five oh eight was was where it bottomed. Yeah. So in pre market on uh, Friday or yesterday morning, you know what I did notice was that it was at twenty five flat. 
So I adjusted the stop loss to 24.80, which I think on Monday was where around where it bounced when we saw the gap down after the US session on Friday night, we opened lower on Monday morning. And uh, so this was, at one point I was down quite a bit. I was down probably like $350 odd dollars. And so we opened lower, maybe opened it like 24, 90 odd. And then I slowly saw, you know, 24, 80 approaching. I kept a stop there and uh, I was contemplating not adjusting, but you know, want to, I'd, I'd be getting in long. Um, the simple reason is that iron ore is still so expensive and, you know, FMG likes closing the gaps, but I was cautious. It missed the stop loss by half a basis point. So I got to 24, 80 and a half. And uh, Darren, a friend of mine that I chat with, um, <laughs> he actually, I thought it was 24, 81 was the low, but that wasn't the case. So I, you know, it was... You know what? When I was watching it though, I and then it and then it went to ninety, and I'm like, ah, uh, and I added, I added twenty four ninety three was the execution that was you know six minutes past the open, and then I wrote this for a little while, and uh, you know, the twenties seemed to be quite stubborn, so I got in, I tried to get out at twenty seven, <laughs> didn't didn't get the fill, but then I got out, and then. Um, I was thinking about maybe shorting, but I, I didn't. And it briefly went below VWAP, but uh, it looks like where, you know, the 2480 is, it's probably it for now, unless we see some, maybe a break of 200 USD a ton on iron ore. But anyway, guys, this video has gone on way too long. I appreciate if you have watched it. And I just wanted to show something. I. There's a gentleman who was talking about Arvol, and um, in one of the chats I'm in, if you just scroll over there on the volume, that's Arvol. So that's today, well, Friday, uh, then Thursday would be yesterday, and then you've got the week average and the month average. So you can see that Thursday was, as you can see, Thursday was in line with just, you know, people weren't interested in, in participating but uh, today was actually was elevated so quite significantly. But um, that is it. That's the update, guys. So little little bit of a, a gem at the end there. I don't, wouldn't call it a gem actually, but what do they call it in, in the uh, in the video games? Easter egg. A little Easter egg at the end there. I think your name's Brandon. So if you're watching, that's Arvol. Hover the uh, the mouse cursor over the uh the volume there on spark but that's it guys thanks for watching and bye for now